One. Try that again. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good to see you all in Sunday school today. It's a blessing if you're able to get out and go to church today. We've got a lot of sickness going around, and uh, just about everybody you come in contact with has got sick folks, and uh, it's just a blessing to be able to come to church. I know we are a little bit short today, but we do have a lot of individuals, a lot of families that are sick and fighting this uh, COVID and cold and all this kind of stuff, so we want to keep them in prayer today. I'm not sure we can get all of them called their names, but we're going to try to call as many as we can and pray for them today. But I'm sure glad to see you here today. We didn't have church last Sunday, and uh, it's good to be back in church today. Let's all stand today, go to the Lord in prayer. I'm thankful to be back in Corinth. <laughs> Went up to South Dakota to try to hunt a little bit this past week, and uh Y'all just think we got cold weather down here. The last day we were up there, it was minus 40 degrees when we left a wind chill and 18 below. And uh, that is very cold, folks. That is very cold. But uh, I'm glad I live in the south where wintertime seems like summertime. And summertime seems like I don't know what. But I'm glad to be back in Corinth. Let's remember some requests today. The Rogers family are out. Brother Jerry Rogers, his family's out. Brother John Robinson and his family's got COVID. They're out. Uh, Sister Gail said they were taking cash back to the hospital. May have rebroke his arm where he had broke it before. So let's uh, pray for them this morning. Uh, they've got a lot going on. And I know we've got several. Sister Hudson is out sick today. So let's remember Sister Hudson and her request. Who else has got a request that we need to remember today? Because I know we've got a lot of them. Anybody got a spoken request? We want to remember Sister Betty Gilmore in our prayer. Courtney Evitz. We need to remember this need. Nora Foster, a little three-year-old, has cancer. Brother Ben Cantrell's, I believe it's his uncle, Kermit Cantrell. Let's remember this request. Don Dotson, uh, as has already said, the Robinson family, Sister Hudson, uh, and then there's a lot of just a lot of sickness in our, throughout our church, and let's uh, let's just lift everybody up in our prayers. Let's pray the Lord keep us safe. I know we're not any better than anybody else to be sick, uh, but I do believe that we can pray to the Lord and ask for help. And He's He's an ever present help in time of trouble or in time of need. And I always loved the scripture where it said that when Jesus was surrounded by the multitude. Uh, they had all kind of sicknesses, everything you can think of. They had just piled them at her feet, and Jesus had compassion on them and healed them all, the Bible says, and healed them all. So uh, it's not a big thing for the Lord to take care of us, our families, our, uh, even the whole world uh, with this uh, outbreak that we have right now. And uh, I just want the Lord to uh, help us through it, get through it, we'll get through it. Uh, let's keep our heads up. And uh, we'll get through this COVID thing, but do, let's do keep our uh, prayers and on the, all for all the individuals, all the families that are come down with it, because they need your prayers today. And we'll go to the Lord in prayer now, Brother Rogers. You want to lead us to prayer today? All right, you may be seated. Come on, ushers, and uh, take up our Sunday school offering this morning. If you have something to give on our Sunday school offering, uh, the church would appreciate it. Our church is doing good. Uh, we do have some projects we would like to finish up on. And uh, if you can give this morning, please give. The Lord is all, has blessed us all. And uh, if, you, uh, if you ever get into a problem with your money situation, a financial situation, you can usually give yourself out of it. 
That's hard to believe for some people. If they, they say, you, well, I'm short of money already. If I give away part of what I got, I'm going to be that much shorter. Don't work that way if you put it toward the work of God. It, it'll come back to you double, pressed down, shaking together, running over. And I, I don't, I'm not just saying this because the Bible says this, but I have proven this word time after time after time. If you'll give, the Lord will put it back. I mean, he'll give you abundance in place of it. And uh, I, this, is, I don't, this may be what Brother Rogers is teaching on this morning, but I'm just telling you, if you want to be blessed, you learn to be a giver, you'll be blessed. And you'll be blessed abundantly. And uh, don't believe me, don't believe the Bible, just put it to the test and see. See if it'll happen for you. I promise you, you'll be surprised. Brother Rogers, come on this morning. The famous brother Murray Rogers, evangelist preaching all over the Mississippi and, and Alcorn County, he's going to come teach us the Word of God today. I'm so glad that we're here, and Brother Rogers got a great message for us today. Come on, Brother Rogers. Let's give him a good hand. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I'd rather be here in any funeral home or any hospital. And I'd rather be here as work than be working. And you, Brother Chad? <laughs> Amen. I'd lot rather be here today. Amen. I'm, I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in this new year. I want to see things that I have not seen. I want to draw closer to God. Did I ever draw closer to the Lord? The Bible said, draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh unto thee. I want to draw closer to him. How do we draw closer to God? We get in the word of God. We read the word of God. We study the word of God. That's how we grow in the Lord. There's going to be problems comes to everyone. Scripture says that time and chance happens to us all. It's going to come, folks, at the it's going to come in our lives, and we need God's Word and His plan in our lives to keep us and help us through what we go through in this life. I'm going to teach this morning, try to teach on this morning, the wilderness experience. The wilderness experience. We see throughout all the scriptures that people went through the storms of life. We see throughout the Word of God that they went through storms in their life but they was to be able to overcome. First John 4 and 4 said, You of God, little children, for you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Christ is in you. you got a hope today. you got a hope of glory in your life today that you can overcome any obstacle that Satan comes and attacks you. The Scripture said the devil is like a roaring lion walking about seeking who he may devour. He's out. He's not out into the world. He's already got them. He is trying to, to seek those that's living for God and serving God to destroy them. But God is on our side today because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. In the book of Exodus chapter number 14 and verse number 10 through 14, that's what I'm going to be reading at this morning. Amen. It said, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because we was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? It is not this the word that which did tell thee in Egypt, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Moses said unto the people, I love this verse here. It said, Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which you will show today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see them again no more forever. Verse number 14 said, For the Lord shall fight for you if you shall hold your peace. The Lord is going to fight for you if you'll hold your peace this morning. Through this difficult time that we see that the children of Israel 
was going to go over to the other side. The Bible said the enemy pursued after them. The enemy came after them. Pharaoh's army came after the children of Israel. You know the scripture, how the Bible says that they crossed, the children of Israel crossed over on dry ground and then the Egyptians drowned in the Red Sea. We know that God provides and makes provision for his people. The scripture says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, he said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds. We know that they were pursuing after them and, and, and trying to destroy their lives. But see, they could not understand that God was providing for them the whole time. God was making a way, the scripture says, when there seemed not to be a way, that God was making a way in their lives. He led them through a cloud by day and a pillar by night. He was leading them out. But here's the thing about it is, the Bible said their shoes didn't wear out, their, their clothes didn't wear out. God was feeding them manna from heaven. And then all that they think to do is mumble and complain that what God had done, to, that I'd rather be back in Egypt. And they, the request that they made is they said that we'd rather be back. Did you leave us out here in this wilderness to die? We'd rather be back in the wilderness. We'd rather be back in Egypt. Why would they want to go back to Egypt? Why? Because it reminded them of sin. Sin is in Egypt. Sin was in the camp of Egypt. God was promised to you and I to take us to a land that flows with milk and honey. God has promised us that he's taken us to a place that we've never seen before. And there's giants and there's, there's, there's going to be some things that pursue in our life to come after us and destroy our life. But Christ is in us because we have his glory in our life. We have Christ living on the inside to overcome the things of this world. The only way that we can be overcomers is through him. The only way that we can be overcomers is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And then we see that, that the children of Israel had crossed over on dry ground. We see all of that. But if you turn back in the book of Exodus chapter number 8, you find that plagues came upon the Egyptians in that day. But you not find in the word of God that it came, it said that even all the cattle and stuff died, but none of the cattle, none of the donkeys, and none of the sheep, none of them that was in Israel got sick. None of them died. God is going to protect his people. The Bible says that God has placed a hedge about us to protect us when the enemy comes in our life. I have, we, we know the plagues that came upon them in that day. There was 10 plagues that came upon them. And I didn't, this is not in the right category that I've got it, but the first plague was frogs and the first was, and the next was lice and flies. But I want to go today to the blood. The scriptures talks about it, that all the fish died in the river, the smell of the people, and, and they smelled in the water. But here's Pharaoh. God told Pharaoh, he said, Moses said, to let my people go. And the Bible said that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh was unmoved, nothing was going to move Pharaoh. And we see that Pharaoh refused to let the people of God go through the storms of life that they was going through in that day. And we know that the, the frogs that came and the frogs came and the water and completely covered the land. There was frogs everywhere, everywhere you went. They was in the houses, they was everywhere. Frogs was everywhere. But Pharaoh still is not going to let the people of God go. It was his command and his request to let my people go. And sometimes that we think, Lord, where are you? I'm in this wilderness. I'm in the storm of my life today. Where are you, Lord? I'm praying, Lord, and I'm asking for your protection and, and your help in my day the Bible said that we will lift our eyes to the hills and our help come from the Lord. Where, you are, where, at, where are you, Lord? And so God knows where we are. 
He knows the Bible said that there is no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. There's no weapon that's formed against us that shall prosper. That God has, has got a great place, but Pharaoh is unmoved. Pharaoh is not going to let the people of God go. One of the things that we see that the other plague that came in their life was lies. Nobody likes lies. It's very hard to get rid of. It was lies in every word. All the dust of the e Egypt become as a massive of lies everywhere. Everywhere you look, there was lies. But Pharaoh is still not going to be moved. Pharaoh's heart is hardened. Pharaoh's not going to let the people of God go. It's God commanded unto him to let his people go. And then another thing that came was flies covered the whole earth. I imagine many of you in here that hate, I can't stand a fly. I hate them. They was flies everywhere. When do you want these flies to leave? Far be fine. No, I don't want them gone tomorrow. I want them gone today. I want them to leave in my home today. I don't want to have anything to do with these flies. But still, Pharaoh refuses to let people of God go. He refuses. He refuses to, to not let his people go. He refuses. And livestock, all the livestock was dead, the Egyptians, every one of them died. But you see that none of Israel's livestock died. Neither none of them got sick. Why? Because God was protecting him as just as he protects you today. The same thing that they went through is the same thing that people are going through today. Is that God, that you, you can't lead us out of this promise. You can't lead us to the promised land. And all the time as God is saying, I can't take you to the promised land. There's a, man, there's a land that's flowing with milk and honey that I'm going to take you to to possess the land. The land's already promised to you. But you got to quit murmuring. You got to quit complaining. You got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And that's what Moses said in the book of, of Moses uh, 14 and 13. He said, Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Jimsons who you see today, the enemy, you'll see them again no more forever. And the next verse said, the Lord shall fight for you if you shall hold your peace. So many times we want to hold on to our own self. We pray and we, we care the Lord ourselves. Why we don't give our burdens to the Lord and cast all our cares upon him and give it to him. But we pick them right back up. We do the same thing that they do. We do the same things that those children did in that day. I said, Lord, did you leave us out here in this wilderness to die? For 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. God was going to take them out the first day. But they began to complain and murmur. And God was feeding them the best of heaven. He was feeding them manna from heaven. And Egypt was onion and garlic. Who wants to stay in Egypt eating onion and garlic? That's what, they was, that's what their food was. God was providing for them. God is protecting them. I, every shoe I ever get wears out. My clothes wear out. But their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. And they still murmured and complained. And God is providing for them the whole time in the wilderness. The Psalmist David said in Psalms chapter 23 and verse 4, he said, Yea, though that I walk through, the valley of the shadow of death, that I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff comfort me, that thou prepares the table for the presence of my enemy, thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. And he said, Surely in goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So many people think just because they go to the house of God that everything is all right. No. We got to keep everything right. We got to stay out of Egypt. We can't dwell in Egypt. In, first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and 17, he said, Wherefore, 
Come out from among them and be in separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I'll be your God. I'll be your son and your daughter. I'll be with you through everything that you go through in your life. The scripture says that God will never leave us and he'll never forsake us. But still, Pharaoh is still unmoved. You cannot touch him. His heart, God hardened his heart and he's not going to be moved. He's not going to turn around. He's not going to give in to God. He's going to do his own thing and what his own flesh desired in his life to, to do the, what things that to stay away. And we see that those livestock died, but Pharaoh still refuses to let the people of God go. And in our lives today, we can see, we can see that the storms that come in our way, just like Brother Chris lost his dad, and there's many, that, and Sister Wilbanks lost her husband, I lost my wife, and many of y'all in here has lost loved ones, and Sister Wendy lost her mom, and her brother and stuff. And so we see that we go through things in life, but what we must understand that, yeah, that God is going to be with us through every trouble and every storm that we face in our life. Here's the thing. If we never went through anything, we wouldn't need God. If everything went the way that we wanted it to go all the time, we wouldn't need the Lord. Everything went the way we wanted it to go, who would need the Lord? But we need, it was a song they sang, if we ever needed the Lord, we sure do need him now. We need him every day in our lives. We, we go through those things to, not for God to, to, to take advantage and destroy us, but God is taking it to a higher place in him in a deeper wall with him in our lives. Amen. Brother Keith lost his mom and dad. That's a horrible thing. And, in a, in a vehicle car wreck to lose a loved one like that. Amen. Good people. You see, we don't understand why would it happen to, to good people as they were. The scripture says time and chance happens to us all. It doesn't matter if you're living for God or you're not living God. It happens. And the Bible said every which way a tree falleth, it's the way it's going to lie. And so we see that the boys came. Horrible boys came and broke out on all, everyone in Egypt. Even the magicians could not break it in that day. Even them, they could not they respond to the boys that was on all the people of God. You know, the scripture says in 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 13, if I shut up the heavens and there would be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send the pestilence upon my people. But he went on, he said, if my people will call by my name with humble themselves, that's the thing that we got to do. We got to humble ourselves. Pharaoh never humbled himself to God. If we would humble ourselves and pray and seek the things of God, he would turn, he would, turn, he would hear from heaven, he would forgive the sin, and he would heal the land. God already promised these people the land that flowed with milk and honey. God already promised us he's a, he's a covenant God. If we will do what he tells us to do in his word, he's going to do his part. He's not going to do his part if we don't do our part. we got to do our part first. Then he's going to do his, what he said in his word that he will do. But Pharaoh still refuses to let the people of God go. He refuses to let the people of God go. And then we see the hell came. Hell threw out the storms and, and killed all, killed all, destroyed all for every plant. Destroyed every plant, everything that was made, destroyed it all. But Pharaoh, he's still unmoved. Pharaoh is still not touched. You can find this in the book of Exodus chapter 8, throughout, going all the way through, through these plagues. Hell broke out, and then you find that locusts is everywhere. Everywhere that you look, there was a locust covered Egyptian, covered the whole everything from left after the, the hell. It was it was it was the locust was all out through the land, and still God hardened 
the heart of Pharaoh still, but he refuses to let the people of God go. He refuses to let the people. It is better to keep the commandments of God than to break one. You know, the scripture said if you break one, you're guilty of all of them. If you just break one of them. Jesus said this in the gospel. He said, if you keep the commandments of God, and my commandments are not grievous. The two commandments, the greatest law is to love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. If you can do those two commandments, all the others are going to fall in its place. Every one of the other commandments, there's more than ten commandments in the Bible. But if you can do those two commandments, the other eight will fall into its place. If you can love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself, you can do that. And then we find that darkness covered the earth. We live in a world that's darkening today. We live in a world that's, that darkness covers the whole earth. And darkness covered the earth for the days. And one, and darkness was everywhere. You couldn't even see your hand in front of your face because darkness. You know, the Bible said that people in the world today, they love darkness more than they love the light. We're living in a world today that they don't want to come out of the darkness. They, want to, they don't want to come out to the light. They want to stay in the darkness. Why does a thief want to go at nighttime? Because it's dark. Nobody can see him. That scripture said, The thief come and not but to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But Pharaoh still chained. Pharaoh knows in his mind. Pharaoh knows in his heart that he's doing wrong, but he's still not going to let the people of God go. He is not going to do it. And then we find the death of the firstborn. Firstborn, the cattle, the Egyptians died, but Israel was spared. We find that all these cattle and stuff are gone throughout the land of Egypt, but we find that God spared the Israelites. Because why? They was his people. God was replying to, to Moses, Moses to Pharaoh to let my people go. To go. Let my people go. The darkness was covering the whole earth throughout the land. The Bible said that God brought them out with a mighty hand. His hand is upon our lives. His hand is with us through the storms of life. Here's the thing that I want to talk to you today about. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 3 and verse number 1, it's talking about John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness. I'm teaching on the wilderness experience this morning. And in the days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is at hand. Verse number three. For this is he that was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord to make his path straight. Here's a, here's a man that's in the wilderness. God is preparing him to go and preach to the people. He's in the wilderness of, Ju of Judea. He's in this wilderness. His, his, his meat is locusts and wild honey. That's what his food was. He was learned to gird it by camel's hair. And he, he was a man that when he came preaching, well, you know the story that how that John had put, that Herod had put John in prison for preaching the gospel. Many of the apostles was put in prison for preaching the gospel. And you can read it in the book of Acts chapter 5. The Bible says that when they placed them into the jailhouse, they was the ones that was out, they was preaching out into the streets, and the jailhouses are still locked down. How did they get out there? God got them out there. They're supposed to be into the jailhouse. The jail cell is locked down, but they're out into the streets preaching the gospel. 
of Christ to the people. Here's John, and I, I can know, and I can stand in his shoes, and you can too today. It's why that he would see, why am I going through what I'm going through today? And I'm out here doing and obeying what God told me to do. Why am I going through this storm right now? Because I got to go through the wilderness experience. I got to go through the storms of life to, go, to get God where he wants me to go. I got the Bible says in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it be troubled in the world that we're living in today. In Luke chapter 7 and 19, in Luke chapter 7 and verse number 19, the Bible said, And John calling to his disciples, this is John the Baptist. He's in the prison house. He's in the, he's in the prison house. He's, he's wanting to know, is Jesus, is he the one or to we to look for another one? Is he the Christ or am I to look for another one? And that's what his request is here. He asked his two disciples, the followers of John, to go ask Jesus, is he the one? In Luke chapter 7 and verse 19, it said, And John calling to his disciples, said to them, to Jesus, saying, Art thou he should come, or we look for another? And when the men were coming to the him, they said unto John Baptist, Hath said us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or shall we look for another? And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and evil spirits unto many. And they was blind, and he gave them sight. Verse 22 said, Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how the, the blinded see, the lame walk, the, de the lepers and cleanse, the death here, the death, excuse me, the death here, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to them. And, but we find in the book, we find it through the gospels of Christ today. You can find it in Matthew chapter number 14. The Bible said that the King Herod had a put John in prison. He put him in prison. John is in prison. He's, he's in prison for not doing a bad thing. He's in prison for doing a good thing. Why am I, here's the thing, is that am I to go and ask him, is he the one or do we look for another, that there's not, a bit, the scripture says there's not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. He said the blinded eyes would be open, the lame walk, the death here, and the poor would have the gospel Priest unto them. As that there's things in this life, in this world that you're facing today that you will never understand. There's things that I face in my life today that I will never understand. Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 17, he said, For I reckon the suffering of this present time is not worthy to compare the glory shall be revealed in us. We don't see it at all. In the book of Ephesians says that we look through a glass dark and we don't see it all. You can read the book of the, the 66 book from Genesis to Revelation and you'll never figure it all out. But what you've got to understand is, is that God has got it figured out. And God has got a plan in our life. And he's going to make a way where the seeming not to be a way. He's going to provide. Here it is. John, in the book of Matthew, John is put into the place of prison house. Here he is. All right. John is out of the prison house. Herod comes and gets him out of the prison house. Herodias has a daughter. It's Herod's birthday. You can read it for yourself. It's Herod's birthday. And the Bible said that she danced before Herod and it pleased him. And she said, what would you request of me? And she said, I want the head of John the Baptist in a charger. I want his head in a charger. Yeah, I can't understand why 
that we're going through this right now, just like the Apostle Paul. The Bible said that two Romans, it, the Bible doesn't declare this. You have to go to history to receive this. It said that he shook the Roman soldiers off of him, and he went and laid his head down at the chopping block. And that's why he said in the book of Timothy, he said, I am ready to be offered up, that my time and my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. And he said, henceforth there's a crown of righteousness. That righteous judge shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but all the love that appear in the Lord. But John the Baptist's head was taken off, Cause of a woman. That's when it pleased Herod. See, we don't understand everything. We don't understand all the things that goes on in this life. But we know that God, amen, the word said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. No matter what I'm going through, no matter the storms that I face in my life, that God is going to provide in me. And he's going to make a way in my life. Isaiah 54 and 17, it says, There's no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt be condemned. This is the inheritance of the servants and the Lord, and their righteousness of me, saith the Lord. God is going to keep his hand upon us and protect us through every storm we go through. I like what David said in Psalm 40 and verse 2. He said, He brought me out of the, out of the, he said, He brought me also out of that my horrible pit, out of the marmy clay. He set my feet up on a rock and established my going. Jesus said in Matthew, up on this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God is going to have a church. The scripture said in the book of Ephesians chapter six, uh, 5 and verse 26, without spot or wrinkle. He's going to have a glorious church. We don't understand it all. We don't know why storms come our way. We don't know, understand. Man was, was talking to the store the other day, and he said, there's everybody that's going to die. I said, no, not everybody's going to die. The scripture in the book of the the gospel said that there be some standing here will not taste the sting of death until they seen the Son of Man coming into the clouds of glory. First Thessalonians said, The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. The trump of God shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Why is the dead going to rise first? Because they're in the ground. The ones that's alive remaining be called up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord in that day. There's going to be some, Brother Keith, that will not taste the sting of death. There will be some that's living here when Christ comes back because that's the gospel. That's what the Word of God says. I said everyone that dies, it's appointed a man to die for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is the wages of sin is death. But God has given us eternal life. And so many times in our own lives, we look at the scriptures of the children of Israel, children of Israel and, they, and we do the same thing that they do. We murmur and we complain. We say, why does this happen to me? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through this storm? The Bible said that every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, the cookie path made straight, the rough way smooth. Luke chapter 3 and verse number 5. We know that God is going to make a way in our life. He's going to provide and make provision to keep his hand up on our life. It's just trusting him. Scripture said in Isaiah 40 and 31, it said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, many times that's what they was doing. They was fainting in their own imagination of their own thinking that I've got an enemy behind me. The scripture says in Isaiah 59 and 19, it says when the enemy shall come in like the flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The Lord's going to fight your battle for us. What did it say in 
in Exodus chapter 14 and verse 14, he said, the Lord shall fight for you if you shall hold your peace. Let you, the Lord fight your battle for you. And too many times, even my own life, I'll pray and I'll ask God to take the burden away from me and I still place it on my own life. And you do the same thing. We'll pray and we'll ask God to let this burden leave us and, and, and take it away. But we'll, when we get done praying, we pick it right back up. And when we need to give it to him. That's why Peter said, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. He cares for us today. I believe that there, there's things that come to not destroy us, but things come to help us. Paul said this. He said, I am persuaded that God, Brother Keith, is able to keep what I committed unto him to this day. If I'm staying faithful to God, he's going to be staying faithful to me. But if I'm not faithful to him, he's not going to be faithful to me. The scripture says, if you be faithful to him, he's going to make you ruler over many. To be faithful to God, to trust in, you see, God's got to have his trust in us. We to put our trust in God, but it works two ways. He is a covenant God. He made the covenant with Abraham. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to be with you. It was, he was so blessed that Lord had to separate himself. There were so many blessings that was coming in their life. Like Brother Keith said, he'll pour out a blessing upon you that you can't even contain. Because why? You can't out give God. God is always going to give back to you, shaking down and heat up and running over with good measures. God's going to give back to your bosom. He's going to do it. He's going to be with us through ever what we go through. And knowing and teaching and preaching the word of God that you can preach and do the best of your ability. And then Satan will come. Brother Keith knows what I'm talking about. Satan said, you did a bum job today. I do a bum job every time I do. <laughs> but Satan comes to us and tells you, you ain't doing no good. Won't you just quit? That's what he wants us all to do is quit. He wants us all to give up and throw in the towel. As Brother Keith taught a Sunday school lesson, there ain't no time to throw in the towel. It's time to keep on holding on and keep on serving God and keep on living for God. For the race is not to the swiftest, nor the battle to the strongest. It's neither to the bread of the wise, to the richest of man to understanding. Time and chance happens to us all that we're going to go through these things in our lives. We're going through the storms of life that we keep on holding on and we keep serving God and we keep living for God because God is going to finish what he's going to do in our life. When I leave this walk of life, I hope that I say that I've done what the Lord wanted me to do. I hope that when I stand before him and give him an account for the deeds that I've done, for standing and preaching and teaching the word of God, that I'm teaching the word of God the way the word of God says. Because there's many today that's not doing that. The Bible talks about false prophets in the world today deceiving many. I don't want to be that. I want to be a follower of the Lord today. And sometimes being a follower of the Lord is not always the easy way. I can relate to John what he was saying this morning. It's to go ask Jesus, is he the one or we to look for another one? But there's not no greater prophet than John. Come preach and prepare you the way of the Lord. Jesus came right behind him. Preach and prepare you the way of the Lord to make his path straight. There's no time to help in a crooked way, but it's a time to walk in the straight and narrow way which leads to life. Because the Bible said there'll be the few that be that find it. It's to walk the straight and narrow way in our lives and be what God wants us to be in this last end time. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I hope I said something to help you this morning. Amen. The Bible said he's going to lead us and guide us into all truth. He's going to be with us through all that we go through in our lives. Amen. God bless you for being here this morning. Amen. I'm going to turn the service over to Brother Keith.